Hi, Ed Diaz here. In today's video, we're going to demonstrate how to record MIDI from the Roland Phantom into Ableton Live. All right, let's get started. So let's get started recording MIDI from the Phantom into Ableton. All right, so I have my Phantom set up in single tone play. I just chose a single tone play, so there's nothing really up going on. I just I just wanted to have a, a bare space to work with. And if you look at Ableton here, I just opened it up at just a normal project level. All right, so we're going to start maybe recording in uh, MIDI channel one, just to kind of get us going in here. So I'm going to say, all right, uh, I'm in Phantom. That's where the MIDI is coming from. So it's coming from Phantom, and I'm going to say it's coming from MIDI channel one. And then I need to also tell it where, after it, the MIDI is recorded, where is it going to? So I'm sending it MIDI two, Phantom, and then to MIDI channel one. Seems pretty easy, right? But the cool thing is, is we could go ahead and record MIDI from the Phantom, just using the Phantom, uh, the keys, just kind of put MIDI. But then we can actually take that MIDI and put it to some other MIDI sources, maybe external MIDI sources, or maybe a specific uh, software synthesizer or, or drum machine. You can get that going. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get this started. So I have it set, Phantom, channel one, MIDI 2 Phantom Channel 1. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Zone View here just so I can see and making sure that my Phantom is indeed in Zone 1. So there it is. It's already showing up. Let's go ahead and just record something real fast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure my tempo, I'll go ahead and put it at 100. And I'll go ahead and have the metronome come on. And then all I have to do is arm the track and just touch the MIDI clip. Here we go. So let's go ahead and get it going. I think I have it for one measure count in, and let's just give it a shot. All right, that's cool. Just real quick, we just wanted to see that we're getting it. I'm going to go ahead and click on that MIDI clip right there, and there it is right there. Everything is in there, and if I press the space bar, There it is, very quick. Now, check this out. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and say, let's go ahead and route this to MIDI channel three. And on the Phantom, I could say, well, on MIDI channel three, maybe I want to put an electric piano. We're just kind of, I just want you to see this. This is pretty cool. So now watch if I play back. In that instance, I could take the MIDI that was recorded from the Phantom and I could route it to any other MIDI channel. I just wanted you to see that. Now, let's go ahead and do this the way a lot of people are going to want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, delete that real quick, what I just recorded. And I'm going to delete the audio at this time because that's not what I'm really working on. And I'm going to go ahead and add other MIDI. So I'll go, go ahead and create uh, other MIDI tracks. So this should be the same way you're going to do it in Mac or PC. I just brought it up this way, but I'm going to go ahead and just bring in eight right now. Although with the Phantom, we can have up to 16. All right, so let's go ahead and get these set. And so I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make this mimic the top side of the Phantom so that way I can kind of get in that recording kind of space, that creative space. So the channel one is all set. Let's do the other ones very quickly. And so to two, phantom, and then right there to two. That's great. So we're just getting this set very quickly. And, you know, we could just do this channel by channel as needed. We don't have to do this. But if this is some way that you want to work in the future, I would highly suggest creating a template so you could just bring it up uh, this way. Very, But it's not really that hard. All right, so everybody just follow along. This is cool. Where it won't take us long. I'll come back to that one. Let me just get all these uh, set. All right. Or another thing I could do, <laughs> I could do this. Let me go ahead and delete some of these. I could probably go in here and just uh, just copy the main one. So I could say, you know what? Let's copy this guy and let's just paste. Great. So, and, and what I did there, everything, even though it's not in uh, sequential order, it's a lot easier for me, a lot faster for me to just go in there and just change the MIDI channels because the MIDI from and the MIDI to are the same at that point. So just a little shortcut in there. And let's just double check right here. We're almost there. Make sure you have everything in sequential order. And here we go. Almost there. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. 
All right, I think we are good. Let me just change that front channel back to one. All right, let's take a look at what we have here. So I have MIDI from going from the from the Phantom, and you see they should be in sequential order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great. And then we're going to have it go MIDI to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, great. Now, a lot of people are going to go ahead and use this for their drums. That's how you're going to want to use this a lot. So maybe I'll go ahead and unarm number one, and I'll go to number eight in Ableton. I'm going to select eight on my Phantom, and I'll go to my drums here. Hit it again so it brings up the tone list, and then I'll hit my favorites, my star, my rated, and I'm going to go to an analog kit. Okay, let's... Great, and we have sound. Ableton is recognizing, Phantom is, is firing off. That's great. Now we'll go here, and now for drums, if I were to go ahead and record it straight, how would I overdub it? Well, here's a cool thing. In Ableton, we can go over here to the plus just hit that right there, and that allows us to start doing overdubbing. And all I have to do is press this record button, and it's all set. So I have it I have it set here, and let's see if I have it going right. I have my tempo at 100. That should be good. So let's just record a two-bar loop and just over keep on overdubbing it, just kind of having some fun. All right, so we should be good. Let's see if I have it right. Here we go. Great, and I have it where it automatically quantizes where, where exactly where I'm at, so everything should be correct. Great, let's go ahead and overdub. I'll hit that record overdub right there. Here we go. Great, it's recorded. And you see it's it's going back around. I went ahead and turned off the uh, session record button there so I can find what I want to find next. Let's go ahead and bring in this rim shot. There we go. Let's pick out something else. Great, I'm ready for that. Let's bring it in and record, and I'll let it come back around. Two, three, four. Great, so now I should have a, a nice overdubbed drum. That quickly, we did it there. And I'll tell you what, on this particular uh, tone in, this, in the scene, I'm gonna turn off that reverb so we can have a little bit more dry. Let's give it a quick listen. All right, here, there we go. All right, so we have that right there. Let's go ahead and continue. And I might go up into my MIDI right here, my column, and I might go ahead and right click and rename it. I might go ahead and keep it, uh, let's go ahead and call it maybe uh, zone eight and drums. And this is just so I remember. I know that that is the drums. I can even go as so far as to color it if I wanted to. Say, okay, that one's red because that's fire. All right. So let's go ahead and do the next one, maybe a bass. So all I have to do on my Phantom, after I choose the channel I'm going to work on here, uh, let's go ahead and same thing. I'll go ahead and tell this zone two, and I'll just go ahead and call it bass for now. Just call it bass. I'm going to go into my Phantom and hit the zone two, zone select right there zone two and i'll go into my bases right here and i'll just choose uh, a bass so maybe i'll just choose an acoustic maybe drop it and i'll do that sounds fine so let's go ahead and get that going make sure it's reacting there we go let me go ahead and turn off the record right there and there we go now everybody's reacting and maybe I can change the sound. That's the great thing about all of this. We can have so much fun. And uh, here we go, the compression uh, finger bass. 
and I think we're ready to go. Now on this one, I probably will not want to use the overdub feature. I, I can go ahead and turn it off or leave it on. I should be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and have this going and see what we can record. Great, now we have a nice clip. Now on this particular one, I went ahead and went four measures. I didn't have to do that. I just wanted to just kind of see it. Uh, now if I wanted to, if everything uh, should be fine. But if I wanted to remember, I could go ahead in here and select everything and I could go ahead and do my quantize. I could get the, all those all those things right here, quantize. But I think, uh, and you see it moved. You see it moved a little bit. So I tighten it up to, and I think on that one, I have my quantize settings to a 16th note, okay? Which you can always change those. Just wanted to show you that. So let's give it another listen now. And this one's, kind of weird on that we'll go back boom boom we'll go ahead and move this guy over uh one maybe we'll get him going there we go let's try it again let's try and get that going a little bit or you know what great thing about midi we can leave this one here let's try it again Okay, I'll do another one, another pass. Great, we tried that pass. Let me go ahead and move this guy really out of the way and we'll put this guy right there. All right, let's try them together. Great, that sounds good. I'll go ahead and delete him. All right, so we have those two tracks. Now let's go ahead and add an electric piano or something of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in MIDI 3. And once again, just for myself to remind myself, and while we're learning, I'll go ahead and type in uh, Zone 3, and I'll call this just, we'll just call it EP. All right, so once again, we'll go to MIDI from, that's Phantom. MIDI 3, it's correct. MIDI 2, Phantom. MIDI 3 is correct. We'll just arm it, and I'll unarm this this track. And now I'll go to my Phantom Zone Select, and I'll just choose a I'll choose an choose an EP. You know. Great, we are all set to go on that one. Let's go ahead and get this guy set to go. Here we go. Great, so let's hear what we have. Okay, let's try it again. Great thing is, if I make a mistake, I can just quickly delete it, or I can move it down to another another section within my live set, just so I can maybe edit it or keep it later. But uh, we're just having some fun here. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. Great, that's all I need. Should be all set to go. All right, so as you can see, we just went ahead and recorded. Uh, we have it all set. I just recorded three MIDI from the Phantom uh, to using Ableton, and then Ableton sending the MIDI that was recorded back to Phantom. All right, so everybody go ahead and have fun with this. And remember, with the Phantom, you could have 16 different zones able to record MIDI. And as you see inside Ableton, we can clearly see everything that's going on. We have a lot of really good visual representation. So just kind of have some fun with this. Uh, in the next video, we'll go ahead and do the same thing, but let's try it inside Arrangement View. All right, I hope this helps. You guys take care, and we'll talk to you soon.